What's going on everybody? Welcome back to LYH Studio. Today we're taking a look at how to make this super easy, super cool layout. I'll take you through it step by step. Let's get started. Just a reminder before we get started to leave a like and subscribe to the video if you enjoy it because it takes me quite a bit of time to put everything together. So I really would appreciate it. This layout will also be featured and available on our website. So check that out. We're starting off with a simple new document and we're going to do just the usual changes to inches, eight and a half by 11. Starting on page number two, and we're gonna do two different pages. Check the facing pages on, feel free to copy this uh, standard layout that we use for every single one of these. After this is created, we're actually going to start off by creating a new layer. I know, super crazy, we've never done this, but I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer just for this particular tutorial. So on layer number two, we're gonna double click into it. I'm gonna name it uh, image. And then on layer number one, double click again, and this is going to be our text layer just so I can lock off the image so that they're not randomly moving around when I don't want them to. First thing we're going to do is create a rectangular frame and it's gonna go all the way around. We're going to put our anchor image in. So if this is my anchor image, I'm putting this guy in and then we're right clicking, going into fitting and then I'm going to fit the content or no, we're gonna do fit frame proportionally. That looks great. So just make sure that this is in our right layer and we can actually go ahead and lock this off. Okay, so this next part is probably one of the more difficult parts. So make sure you're following along with me while I do this. We're gonna go ahead and create a text box. So I'm just gonna drag a text box and it's gonna fill the entire margin. And you can put anything you really want in here. So I'm gonna put LYH Studio, but I might put something in between because of space. Now the trick I find is to not have spaces in here just to keep the form consistent. I'm gonna go ahead and make this into a nice sans serif font. That means we are not going to have these little tails that are on the edge. So for this particular layout, we're gonna be using Futura for everything. I'm gonna go ahead and make this a bigger font. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that something like a 72. Maybe it needs to be a little bit bigger. I'm gonna try 75. Uh, and what I wanna do is fill this from margin to margin. And how we're gonna do that is through tracking now we went through tracking before in some other videos but tracking basically allows you to put spaces in between the letters so that they're basically pushed apart i'm gonna go ahead and put this on something like a 150 just to see if it occupies the entire margin and it does i'm gonna just tighten this text box up just a little bit in order for that text to fill everything in here and then what i'm going to do is actually go ahead and select everything and i'm going to change this into stroke so it's going to outline everything as you can see here. And I'm actually going to make this a thicker stroke. I want this to show up more than the picture itself. And how you do this is to go into the stroke panel. If you don't have this, it's going to be on windows and then you can switch it on here. You can also press F10. Now I'm going to go ahead and change the weight of this to something like a two or even a three. And the next part is the most important part for this particular layout. This is the skill that we want to learn. So select the text box itself. We're going up to edit. We're going up to step and repeat. And there are many different options we can play around with here. One is create as a grid. Now this is pretty self-explanatory. It's going to basically make a grid of what we, whatever we have selected. So for example, if I want two columns and I turn the horizontal distance up, you can see it's going to make a copy in two different columns. Um, and then you can also, you know, change the distance between the different rows. But for this example, I'm not going to create this as a grid and I'm just going to create this as one single vertical offset. And you can see that if I have a horizontal offset as well as a vertical offset here, it's going to make it diagonal because you're first offsetting in the X direction 0 0.75 and then in the Y direction 0 0.43. So we don't really want that. We're going to make that zero. And then I'm just gonna play around with a distance that I feel like is good for this. So in for this format in particular, I don't want the text to touch, but obviously you can make them overlap if you want. And I'm gonna increase the count one more than I feel like I need, maybe even two more if it allows me. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now the next step is pretty important. Before you touch anything else, don't touch anything on the keyboard or the mouse, you're gonna select this last one on the very end and you're going to group everything. So Control G, or you can right click 
and just hit group. Now it says ungroup because I've already grouped it, but go ahead and group everything. And then we're going to actually move this down so that, you know, it's, it's occupying the entire image. And what we can actually come in and start to do here is maybe we want this to be heavier on the top side. So we can go in, highlight everything in this text box, and then actually just change the stroke and fill so that some of these are actually filled in and some of these are just the outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that for a couple of these. This looks pretty good. We're gonna go ahead into the effects. If you guys don't have this, again, it's window right here, effects, control shift 10. So I'm gonna go ahead and select our group. And then I like to use a nice color burn for something like this, maybe a color dodge, sorry, that's what I meant, a color dodge. What I like to do is give this a nice gradient. So how we're gonna do that is go over to our left and select the gradient feather tool. This is also applicable if you want to go into your effects panel and go into gradient feather. But we're gonna use the tool right here and we're just gonna drag it from the top to the bottom. And you can see it's created a nice gradient for me. Look at that, it's looking pretty good. And obviously you can move this around, up and down, if you don't like the way that it's situated. So what we're making is pretty cool, but you can take it to the next level if you put it on a platform like Issue, where it turns it into a nice flipbook with animations as if you're flipping a magazine online. It's really for people that are, you know, designers, students, that are wanting to send it and share your idea and share your portfolio with anybody with really just the URL link. So you can get started with Issue today for free, but if you want to sign up for the premium plan, you can use my promo code LH25 for 25% off the annual plan. And that'll get you going on a lot of great stuff, especially if you're trying to job hunt or try to publish your portfolio online. It'll help you a lot with publicity and getting your portfolio out there. So I highly recommend these guys because I've personally used them before. And yeah, link down in the description below, check it out. So. We have something really, really cool on the left side already. And we're just gonna fill the rest of the page with our heading. Again, we're using Futura. So I'm gonna go ahead and make that into Futura Bold. And then let's do something like a 75. And I'm gonna move this. And again, we want to occupy this entirety of the margins. So I'm gonna go ahead and play it around with the font size as well as the tracking so that I get the effect that I want. All right, and then we're gonna give this a nice white background like that. And there we go, that's our left page. So for this right page, we're going to start off by just copying this guy, the create over, and we're actually gonna write something that is going to go with the create. And then we're actually going to unlock our image and just put a nice image right underneath it that might go to the halfway point. Let your smart guides help you out with that. Drag this to the image layer and put in another image that you think is good for the job. We're gonna go in and fit it. So right click, fitting, fit frame proportionally. And then if I click in the center of this, I can drag this guy up and down like that until I find a place that I think is good. It seems like this wants a little bit more space. So I'm gonna give that more space on this side, maybe until where the L is. And one thing I like to do is give this text the same color as your image. So for example, for this guy, I'm gonna make this and just use the eyedropper tool, which is here, and just sample the image with our text highlighted. And then you can actually pull this guy all the way up so that they kind of blend together and yeah, it just look, it's just a really cool effect. There we go, something like that. And we're going to go ahead and lock the image layer one more time. After we have these guys in, we're just gonna create a nice little anchoring element down here with the same kind of thing we did over here. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag another text box, put in what I want. I'll go ahead and change that into our sans serif font. So for this one, if you guys remember, we're using Futura. I'm gonna use a, a lighter font, so maybe something like uh, maybe a Demi would be good. There we go. And I'm just gonna change this so that it's a good size, maybe something like that. And also give it a nice tracking, maybe something like a 150. And then we're gonna double click the edge right there, move it to the corner, and we're doing the same thing. So edit, step, and repeat. And here you can see this is looking pretty good. Let's do something a little bit more. Uh, yeah, like that. So again, don't touch anything, no keyboard, no mouse. Make sure you select that last one at the end, group everything, control G, uh, and just move it in the corner. You can have a clip off the page a little bit if you want. 
uh, but also give it that nice gradient feather. So let's do something like this. Oh, that looks really good. So let's give this the same effect of the color dodge so that when it meets that, it changes color. And we just have to finish this page off with some text. So I'm gonna go ahead and just create that over there. It's going to be two different columns. So first I'm gonna place it with placeholder text, right click the frame. We're gonna go into text frame options, give it two different columns and just hit okay. And for this particular one, I'm gonna make the text a little bit lighter. And that's it. That is our amazing layout that we just created. If you guys have learned anything new or something that you thought was, oh wow, that's pretty cool. Leave that in the description. I would love to know what you guys think about these videos. And yeah, like always, if you guys have learned anything, please don't hesitate to leave a like, subscribe, and share with your friends. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey, are you still a pirate sailing the seas with your Adobe subscription? Well, maybe it's time to get the actual one. Because of all the new AI tools that's coming out, you can save a lot of time just by using generative AI, which is available in the Adobe Cloud if you have a subscription. So if you want to support the channel, I have a link down in the description where you can get that. And for the low price of two avocado toes, I feel like it's pretty justified. So if you want to pick that up, link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel.